Now you know them, they're elements. Well, when they react together, they form these compounds, and we can write chemical equations to be able to describe what's happening. So equations are when we take chemicals that are reacting, that's called reactants, and they produce things that are called products. Right. We can write these chemicals down in formulas, write out chemical equations to be able to describe what's happening. So now in this question that I've got going to have on the board here, let's take some phosphorus and react it with chlorine. So it's two nonmetals coming together to form a molecule. And let's make that molecule phosphorus pentachloride. Okay, so start it off. We've got some phosphorus, we've got some chlorine, and we're going to make that product over here on the other side of that arrow. This means produces, right? This means reacts with. So, oh, did you notice? Did you notice? This ain't right. This is not good. I'll tell you why. Phosphorus is not P. You have to write the elemental form that occurs naturally in nature in these types of reactions. So it's P4. Reacts with Cl. Hey, no group 7. Cl2. So it's P4 plus Cl2. Now what does that make? It can make a compound called phosphorus pentachloride, and that's actually a solid at room temperature. This is a gas and this is a solid too. You kind of have to be told with these molecular ones whether they're solid or a liquid or gas. But listen to this. All ionic compounds, when we make them, they're solid at room temperature. Unless you put them into water, then they turn aqueous. That's coming. Now, P4 plus Cl2, when they get together, they can form PCl5. But there's still four Cps that are reacting, but only one produced. We have to balance this equation. Now, how do we do that? Well, we put numbers in front to describe the balancing. Now, these numbers are actually, they represent the number of moles, but we'll get to moles in a while, and I'll tell you what they really mean. Right now, they're just these balancing numbers or coefficients that we put in front. For instance, if we've got four phosphoruses here, we have the potential to be able to make, I'm going to move this over a little bit, sorry, we have the potential to make four phosphorus compounds here. So P4 here, we need four over here. We don't put a four there, we put it in front. It's coefficient, so we can make four of these compounds. But look what this is saying. Two chlorines make how many here? Well, not five, but four times five, which is 20. Mm -hmm. That's not balanced. How do you balance it? Well, if there's 4 times 5, 20 chlorines here, what times 2 is going to be able to get us 20 chlorines on this side? It's pretty obvious, I hope, but the answer is 10. 10 times 2, that's 20 chlorines. Now look at the way this is balanced. 4 phosphorus here, 4 phosphorus here. 10 times 2 as 10 chlorine molecules is 20 chlorine atoms. 4 times 5 is 20 chlorine atoms. And this, 1, 10, and 4, we don't put the 1 there, that's the balanced equation for this reaction. Okay, and this one's called simple composition, because we're just taking elements and making a compound. Now let's do a decomposition. Take this compound, iron 3 oxide. Now why is it iron 3 oxide? There's only two irons here. <laughs> What's the charge originally of Fe? It was a 3 positive and the O is 2 negative. So that's the iron with the 3 positive charge, iron 3 oxide. Iron 2 oxide would have what formula? FeO. Yeah. Okay, now, if this chemical, I tell you that it decomposes into its elements, how do you write that as an equation? And then how do you balance it? If Fe2O3 decomposes, we don't write Fe2 and then plus O3. No, 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 no. We write down what the elements are in their natural states found out here. Iron is just Fe. And it's a solid because iron is a metal, isn't it? And then plus oxygen. But oxygen is O2, no group 7. It's diatomic. Now, that's iron 3 oxide decomposing into its two elements. Now we've got to balance the equation. Okay, watch this. There's two here. So we could put a 2 in front here, and that's totally legitimate, too. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I just end up erasing it, but you can do that if you want to. It's okay. You can erase stuff, you know. Three O's here and two O's here. What's the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2? 6. And so, therefore, let's make 6 O's on each side. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So how do we make six O's here? Well, erase that and change it to a six. No, we can't do that. So what do you do? You put a two in front. Yeah, two times three is six oxygens. So how do you make this six? Well, we just take a six. No. Put a three in front. Three times two is six. Two times three is six. You see, now that's balanced for the oxygens, not the irons, though. Two times two is four. What do you do? Put the four in front. Two, four, three of the lowest ratio for balancing here. We always try to get the lowest whole number ratio for our balancing. And that, you can see, two, four, three, lowest whole number ratio present.